Alright, so we did a video on the Dasung a few months back and it didn't look very good. Dasung reported that their device had issues and is incompatible with any sort of blue light cut on the source device. So we are redoing it and with any sort of orange hues turned off. So let's begin. This is the Dasung paper-like color. It is one of the most expensive e-paper devices ever built, coming in at $2,000 USD. The entire device is built out of plastic, as well as the mount, neck, and base of it being as plastic as well. It has metal components inside, of course, but it is a little bit more on the economical side when it comes to the design and build. There are some buttons down below in the bottom left corner that allow for different modes to be chosen, and the back has ample amount of ports from a display port, USB-C, and an HDMI. The monitor can be hooked up with essentially anything as it is a passive device like any other television or monitor would be. So let's dive in and see how this looks with the night light turned off this time and check out the Dasung paper-like color. So when you have the unit open like this, there are tons of buttons on the bottom left corner as we've showed you in the intro. They do different things. For example, they will clear the screen, they will change modes from video mode, auto mode, text mode, and graphic mode. Each mode will have their own set of appearances and their own set of controls when it comes to contrast. For example, graphic mode, you can go pretty dark, like so, or pretty light, like that. Now when you switch modes, they're all gonna have their different settings, so text mode's gonna look awful for anything that is not text. In fact, it'll look so poor you won't even be able to see what's on the screen until you go to something that has text like this, in which case you change the contrast and it's only just gonna benefit because it's just gonna look better because it's just a black and white experience. But when it gets into something like color, like 3D landscapes and colored balls and stuff like that, your contrast controls are pretty important, more so than when you're on text because there's a lot going on here. There's highlights and lowlights and dimension to it that you can kind of choose yourself to have. So for example, right now we have no shading around this green ball, for example. But then if we increase it like that, you see we start getting this kind of pixelation burst of shading that gives you the illusion that it is three dimensions because that's the picture at hand here. So you really do have to play with this a lot. And as you go down, you'll see that it's trying to pick up the slack and add these little dots in between because it can't properly convey the color with what you are asking of it. You're asking too much of the contrast dial. And then when it gets overexposed, it looks pretty poor as well. You also have several light modes, which is probably more evident if we go to the picture right here where there is text on the screen. So you have light off, you have mixed light on, you have blue light on, and then you have orange. All of these are going to look different. However, this is in its base form. No glow light and let's just say middle contrast right there. It's never gonna look like this. This is a Palma and this is just a pure white screen. This is as white as it's going to look and unfortunately, like Linus said, that looks like ass because it just kind of does but it also kind of doesn't because this is the inherent problem with Kaleido is that the background is always going to be very gray in fact it doesn't start looking good until you have the glow light on then it takes the edge off a little bit now unlike most devices this one doesn't have a dial to kind of play around with you can go like this and change the intensity of the light but there's only a certain amount of stages and it's not quite as customizable as a device that has a dedicated UI like this that has slider bars so they don't give you a whole lot of choices when it comes to the light although funnily enough they give you too many choices when it comes to the mode slash contrast combination there are just so many different modes with seven to 10 different individual contrast levels in between that it is almost a little bit overwhelming at times because there's just so much you have to learn when it comes to these units. Now, Dasung is quite fast and we'll show you a video in a second 
And in fact, this has 33 hertz, which means it on paper, it is the fastest e-ink device of all time. But all things considered, it's not that quick when it comes to overall usability and just moving things around. In fact, we've seen devices like Onyx that's just a lot more fluid than this unit. In fact, there's a lot of staining on the screen that is pretty prevalent, which is why one of the six buttons is a clear button to get rid of all that. But it is still kind of evident that no matter what mode you're kind of on, there is going to be a great deal of staining and kind of this dithering effect when you move it around. Now, although this is color and this is a large screen, so we're kind of asking a lot of this unit to do what it does. So in that regard, it's not terrible, but it's hard to overlook the fact that it just doesn't look that good. It really is just not a very good looking unit. It is the most usable realistically from a logistical standpoint. It's quick enough that it, it gets the job done and you just have to mitigate the issues like the staining, like the modes, like the lack of glow light options with the different buttons you have here. But overall, it's not going to replace your computer monitor just yet. We will admit that we made a mistake on the first video we did because Dasung didn't tell us that they couldn't use their device with night mode or warm light. And that made it look really bad. But we've since readjusted things and turned night mode off of our primary laptop here off camera. and. It doesn't look all that much better, although, you know, we're trying to nitpick and we're trying to find faults and the pros and cons, but it does fall a little bit short of replacing your monitor. It's not quite there yet. Is this unit worth $2,000 USD? No, not by a long shot. Is it revolutionary in the way that it displays color? No, not at all. It looks fairly poor. Is it fast? Yes. Yes, it is. The self-proclaimed godlike refresh is as close to godlike as you could conceivably get. It is very, very quick. In fact, it is the quickest video playback of any e-paper device we've seen. So in that regard, it gets ultimate bonus points for being properly advertised as such because it truly is ridiculously fluid. But that's really where this begins and ends. We're not being critical, we're being real. It's just far too blurry, the staining is prevalent, and it is incredibly grey and dark without the glow light on. And overall it is just simply and objectively too expensive. $2000 USD is too much for this unit. Even though we do understand it is running e-paper, it's just too much of a stretch. Let us all know what you think, and thanks for watching.